Hello, everyone. Great to see such a room full of important people. I, I gave a talk here yesterday. It was more about cybersecurity, and I said to all of them in the audience that they're the last defense, line of defense between us good people and the other ones. And now you're equally important because you guys, your programs and your development are the ones who are going to keep our economy running in the coming years. You're the ones who are going to employ my sons, you're the ones or your companies with the new business models are the ones who are going to pay the taxes to keep the schools and uh, hospitals running. So hope we have a good session and um, I'm going to take a data-driven approach on, on business development, looking at digital, digital digitalization, hard work. And um, let's hope that uh, some of the observations we have along the ways are going to prove valuable or feel relevant to you. Um, I'm going to have to take a, a view on, on these things, um, building on 20 years about of looking at uh, the world through the data of our clients and customers. And uh, when you do it long enough, you actually can read a lot of the process. It's like a sandy beach. The people working in the organization leave the footprints. And when you do it long enough, you can read the footprints, see who are, who are behaving like we hope they do and um, which ones are making it up as they go. And one last observation or thought actually, that I had. I was looking at the presentations yesterday. Big numbers, really big numbers. Personal data stolen by the hundreds of thousands, even millions. Criminal revenue from extortion, fraud, or criminal reuse of these assets in the billions. Everyone was trying to outshoot everyone else with a bigger number. And I'm going to outshoot everyone with the smallest the number one, as in everyone and each one, including me. So today we're going to talk about the person on the other side of the screen who you are reaching with your services and what you could be thinking on about on your journey. Because now we are on a journey. We may think that it's not relevant to us, but um, really it is. Um, digital is reaching across industries. And um, one of the things I personally share, actually, is, is a fact that you have a choice. You have an abundance of choice, actually. When you're sitting on the other side of the screen, the whole world, quite literally, is available to you, for the most part. And then, why do you choose to come back to the particular screen? Think of it as your service delivery to this one person making a choice, making a call. It needs to be legal. That's the premise. But it's actually not quite self-evident. You, you give a good laugh there. Um, many actually sort of wiggle about. Sense of security. It's small things. It's subjective, it's a feeling. And it's created by many factors. Some of them are rational, some of them are not. Then there's the ease of use, the reason to come there. It's a cultural fit, it might be language, terminology. The way the service is structured, it needs to meet the way I think it should behave or it is expected to behave. And then there is the actual thing that you're getting, the reason you are there. So that's a stack, really, of takeaways. So what are the capabilities that we apply? GDPR was a big topic yesterday, but I think it's a relevant topic today, but place it into context. GDPR does not deliver competitive edge. It's a prerequisite. There's nothing that you can gain from only doing this, but you need it. Then yesterday's guys, and girls, they deal with this technical and logical security, keeping things safe and intact. Ease of use, that's UX. We're getting better at that, multi-channel, what have you. Consistency and fit for purpose. And then you have 
some, something which is a strong part of my message today. You can create a relationship, you can create actually a, a marketplace that only has this one customer. You can be the best for just them. Digital or, or the, the information management allows you that. And then don't think of this as being service oriented on this screen and then you have this formal screen on this side. Yeah, here's, uh, here we are, GDPR compliant and here I'm your best friend. They need to mesh together, make it seamless, make it an assumption, make them feel as they are, rightly empowered. Because if you lose out on the pillars here, then there's nothing left. That's a leaf blowing away in the wind. There's nobody coming back to this service. And on the other hand, all the money you spent on the bottom is also wasted. So pay attention and make it stick. So um, back in the day, it's horribly many years ago actually, I went to business school and this guy was king. It's Michael Porter, I think Michael, yeah, Michael Porter. So this is a competitive model just to describe the factors that play in when you're, when you're looking at, at your business performance and um, getting it competitive. And um, we just had a few good talks there with, with some of the early tables and uh, I'm, I'm claiming that really only those uh, industries which are protected by regulation or where the, the cost of logistics is prohibitive, they're going to stay safe or they're going to stay traditional. Everyone else is going to be affected. So you got your rivalry, that's the current market, and then you have the market entry barriers. Traditionally, that used to be more capital driven, could be competence, but in a physical world, it had to do with something physical or monetary. Now it really isn't. So as in my opening phrase is the world is available. So really, I mean, it doesn't make a whole, I think the shirt comes from UK. I wouldn't have bought, bought this shirt from the UK 10 years ago. Now it's the most conve convenient way of getting it. Supply bargaining power. So what are the guys who are selling it to us? Get, do they get to call the shots? Um, one thing, everybody is actually trying to reach the customer. Maybe not to get to their purse, but really to get to their thoughts and needs. So now the original equipment manufacturers, I mean, you guys are all about IoT as well. They're actually trying to learn in order to produce the best service in the next generation. And it might be that they're trying, out, trying to cut out the middlemen or the traditional delivery mechanisms. So there's a new threat out there. Then you have the substitutes, and now really, some of the business models we had just a few years ago, they are not here anymore. Who goes to rent a DVD? Can I see some hands? No? Why? So you need to understand what the core value is that you're delivering, not how you're delivering it, and then try and stay abreast. So this is a lot about innovation today. You really need to pay close attention to why someone is paying for something and not how we're getting it across. So the freedom of choice, the role of the customer, I think customer is king. One of the GDPR talks I, I gave back in the day was ent ent entitled uh, customer is king. So they really are in many senses. But then again, from a regulatory point of view, you also have kings in your organizations. Pay close attention to the skills and, and the talent in the teams, because they also have a, an expectation of being treated fairly, treated with integrity and respect. It's also something that comes as a byproduct if you do your governance correctly. So, very different picture. And again, I think most of us should pay attention and really think why we are doing things. So this is, this is now the why part, and in a few slides I'll try and give my view on the how. Going digital, changing the mechanism for creating and delivering value. That's what business is, delivering value. And again, 
remembering that I'm a data guy, I'm going to talk to you about data. Oh, it's only a 20-minute piece, so try and stick. Um, I was wondering why the sell point in a digitalization program becomes hard. And I realized that the people, the, the group, the people in the room who are doing communication is a really different group of people than the ones who are doing the sell. They're not used to big systems. They're not your ERP people. They work in comms. They can tell a story. They can create a relationship. They're invaluable people. But you need to combine the skills because now that we're trying to make a seamless transition from talking into promising, the picture changes really, really dramatically. You can't sell anything with a PDF document. You can't you can do order entry. You need a structure, you need a system, you need a process, you need integrations. You need to be confident enough to transact the data that you're consuming from the person. It's a person, no one on the other side. So now GDPR comes into the picture as well. But this really more is about getting the right people engaged because otherwise you won't be able to draw the green arrow. And it might be that the orange arrow isn't quite as hard to get across because delivery and, and order, order entry, they're more closely related in terms of information management. So more, I think, to do with making it a, a controlled experience across geographies, across the different channels that you have, and making sure that you stay compliant because there are massive concerns regarding compliance. Not many of you are able to deliver the good or service on your own. You need to distribute information and you have a cross-organizational delivery process. So now it becomes not only about your guys, your people, your systems, but it's a network. And the gaps in the process and the systems obviously get in the way. But we've got across those chasms here before. So um, we've done well, we've done business data for about 20 years, and about 15 of those we have reverse engineered business prices just looking at the data. So we have a lot of built up statistics and analytical models. And as I said, we can take your sandy beach and then we can see how the people run around on it and tell you where you have gap fits in the data, so the master data, the, the structures that enable the flow of the water in the pipe. The guys with the buckets are people working in things like customer service or order and delivery, just taking data from one point in the pipe and pouring in it into the next. That's not productive work. You need to get around that. Sometimes they pour some on the ground, and sometimes something gets into the water. So there's never really value added in this. And that's a bottleneck that's a hindrance for digitalization. Try and find the people. They, they're not there to delight your customer. They're there to fix problems in your architecture. Then if some of the water gets out, it's an uncontrolled event. That's now a regulatory concern as well. If the wrong data gets out from your process, even if it's deliberate and sent to a third party, but you don't have the comps and controls in place, then that's just risk. So digital, going digital actually means, and I'm claiming now, that when you change the value delivery, then you're doing digitalization. If you're just making it more efficient, for instance, to post a cost, uh, cost claim or a, or a travel invoice, that's, not, that's just the new form of paper clips. Your suppliers will be able to supply, provide that. If they're up to date, they're going to be able to automate and cut costs. But that doesn't drive innovation and change in your organization. So only dealing with getting the water to flow counts as going digital. So, 
I'm now going to come back to my opening about the small number, the one, us, each of us. So now you can actually plan to become someone's best friend in a particular value delivery thing, scenario. Why will he or she come back? There's trust, a sense of respect and integrity, and if I give data as collateral for our relationship, it's used for some good. And if I want to change my call on the data, I can do. I feel that I am being respected in our relationship. That's not like getting a printout from Google with everything I've done in the last 10 years. Feels like somebody's talking me. All respect to Google. So the trust capital is a voluntary thing. It's not something that they just grab from me. So it's something I hand over in order to actually reap benefits, be served in the best way possible. When I need it, as I need it. Now, with all of the di digital, it's actually possible. You can mass customize the experience if you do it right and be just a little different for everyone, but be different in a way that they expect and hope. So, coming back, coming to the last stretch, home stretch, we see that um, there are pillars for success. There's the obvious one, the one that we've been working with for, for the 20 odd years when in, in the data and automation side. Uh, that's the solid structures, sound data. Somebody actually came back after my talk yesterday and said, because I, I don't subscribe to the view that data is oil. It isn't. Only if you sell it on the criminal market, it has a discrete value of its own. Data is fuel for your process. And just as clean fuel burns best, good data will deliver good process behavior. You need to combine the data in a process that fulfills a need, then you have value. It's an asset, obviously, but it doesn't carry value if you don't transact and consume it. So that's sort of the hard side. And then we have this more, the, the newer side. With GDPR, I think there's a lot more awareness now that it's a question of re a relationship. There's an interplay. And since there is choice, and there's a bit of regulatory risk as well. I think people are going to pay more attention. But I urge you to do it out of free will, because if you do it only as a risk mitigation, people will notice and they will choose otherwise. So this is a cultural thing. People earn the respect and they expect it. And only if you want to provide it, they will feel that you do. So now, if we have our two pillars, the hard side and the let's say, the human side, ethical side, then we can build something sustainable in the middle. So digitalization isn't actually a driver, it's an outcome. And it's an outcome that you can reach when you put your bets correctly. I think um, This might have been a slightly different voice than you were expecting, but I hope our reflections on reality were thought-provoking and may help you to create a good team around it and, uh, and actually do digital correctly. So thank you very much for your attendance and attention, and uh, I hope the rest of the day is uh, interesting and gives you food for thought. Thank you very much.